Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for jumping on the call. And this is the VET CVI webinar. Um, so the best way we've found to kind of demonstrate VET CVI um, is just kind of start making a, a CVI. <clears throat> we'll go through some of the some of the tips and tricks on how to use it, as well as uh, the TB test chart and the brucellosis test chart area as well. So to begin with, um, this is um, what you see on your home screen here is, or this is the home screen, I should say. And so um, here we'll start off by showing the, the My Account features. And those of you that are, <clears throat> excuse me already have that CVI will know that um, there was an update that got pushed out uh, two weeks ago and has some, some pretty cool features in there. So we'll talk about those as well. Some of those new features are in this My Account area. And so we want to be sure and, and show everybody this. So if you click the My Account area, um, after you've signed up for VET CVI, this is the information that you would have already provided to us. And so um, your obviously your name, address, city, state, zip, phone number, and email address. The other thing you'll see here is that there's an area to edit your license. Um, so if you have an expiration date that you need to update or um, change anything on there, you can simply push the little pencil button in either your USDA accredi accreditation area or your state license. We will uh, kind of warn you, though, that this warning will pop up saying that if you do change anything in there, it will temporarily revoke um, your vet CVI access until it's approved by a state animal health official. So by pushing continue, you can then change um, what you need to here to update what your accreditation or license information is. Push submit, and then we'll get it here in the office to update um, and give you access back. <clears throat> then then the same things. Yes. Can I jump in for a minute? This is Jamie, everybody. Um, I just want to let folks know that just this week, I've had some veterinarians that have called and their account has been deactivated. So I've gone in and I've reactivated that account. And I don't know if there's a little glitch right now, but they weren't able to edit their license. So if any of you have trouble with that, please, please, please let me know because I will get that over to a claim as quickly as I can. So um, just, just wanted to let everybody know that. Yep, great, great point. Thanks for for putting that out there. Um, <clears throat> so the other uh, area that we want to be sure and show you in this my account area is the custom statements area. Here you can put custom statements that you're going to commonly use. Um, the just by typing in here, you know, you can add um, any custom statement that you need to um, push pushing save, it'll put it down here into your save statements so that then when you create a CVI, um, those are there for you. The other really nice feature about this is you can then search those custom statements. And so as you begin to use more and more of those custom statements, um, putting keywords in there and pushing search um, can easily filter those through for you to be able to find those um, at a more rapid pace. And then the, the, the next thing I'll show you is to uh, this little button down here to add a license. Um, so if you had another state that you were licensed in and would like to use VET CVI um, by clicking that state, adding the license and the accreditation or the expiration date will get you um, pushed to that state. They will have to um, accept you or approve you with, within their state before you have access. Um, but just wanted to point that out. The other thing I want to point out, and this one um, we'll come back to in a little bit here in a little bit later, but one of the new features of Vet CVI on the update is this customized import file. And so um, here you can include or exclude any of the information in your spreadsheet um, in your animal upload. So Here's kind of a, a generic spreadsheet example. We'll we'll do an example, and this will make probably more sense here later. But I just want to point this out so that when we do get to that point, you're not super confused. Um, you can just by 
dragging and dropping include or exclude any of the um, information that is on that spreadsheet and then rearrange any of that if um, you so desire. So again, just wanted to mention that before we get into creating a CVI, um, but it will make more sense when we start when we start making one. So with that being said, we'll just start making this a CVI. And um, the last two webinars we've had, we had really good turnouts on both of those and, and realized that there were um, both large animal veterinarians as well as small animal veterinarians on there. And so for this example, we're going to create a large animal CVI, but please know that um, both the large animal CVI and the small animal CVI um, functionalities work the exact same. The only difference is um, the species is for a small animal is just dog, cat, um, so on and so forth, whereas the large is, is your production animal. So everything we talk about in the large also applies to the small animal um, as well. So we'll just go ahead and get started. And so to create a large animal CBI, we'll push create CBI. And this is the, the general details page. And so Typically, there's not much that you're going to have to add onto this page. Um, again, this is the information that you would have already provided us when you signed up for your account. And so there's um, very little, if any, reason that you would ever have to change any of this. Your certificate number is going to be pre-populated each time you push it, uh, create. There's a spot for an entry permit number. Um, you do have to call the state of destination to figure out what that permit number is, would be if, if one is required. Then there's the inspection date. Um, that's a kind of a scroll, choose your, how um, that inspect, inspection date, what it is, and then a shipment date as well. Um, that's pretty much all for the, the general details in the veterinarian information page. So we'll go ahead and click next. And the next page is your origin and consigner information. So um, we'll just go ahead and start creating one. So we'll be writing one today for John Doe. Um, one thing we want to be sure to let you guys know is if there's a if there's not a business name, um, it, it does require that you you put something in there. So simply putting in a or not applicable um, if there's not a business name is is what we recommend um, people doing. The address um, will go one, two, three Main Street for this example. And we'll just say this is in Manhattan, Kansas. Um, again, Kansas already being the default state that you're writing it from. It does require that zip code as well as a phone number. So for this example, we'll just put a, a random phone number in there. The really nice feature about VetCVI is um, if there's an email address listed, once you submit the, the certificate to the state here or here in Manhattan, um, any email addresses that is in this spot or down here at the bottom will automatically get a, a, an, a, an email of that electronic CVI. Um, this is a really cool feature, especially for um, any transportation or um, any other people that may need that that email address. So we'll just put um, we'll just put something in here um, just to show you. Then the next um, kind of scrolling down is the current state and area status. Again, here in the state of Kansas, tuberculosis will be free and then brucellosis is also free. One thing I want to point out is oftentimes the consigner in the origin information is the same thing. And so instead of having to retype out all of this um, consigner information, uh, click the same as above and it will pre-fill that based on what you have um, up here at the top. One thing we do caution people with is, and it's not a big deal, it's more of a preference, is if there's an email both here at the bottom and here at the top, that email address will get a duplicate copy. So there, that CVI will send two um, emails to, to that email address because you put it in there twice. If that's an issue or you have a producer or somebody saying, hey, I don't need that, go ahead and take the bottom one out and it will prevent them from getting um, a duplicate email. So there's another way to enter origin and consigner information into VET CVI. Um, and that's by using the address book functionality. 
Um, the address book functionality works well. Um, I will say that if on your device, your address book has the, the first name, last name, address, city, state, zip, phone number, all of that in there in the correct columns and of what your address book is, um, it will pull it over seamlessly. However, if it's not in there, obviously it won't. So it does have to be in there in the correct order, in the correct area, or it doesn't come over. So just want to point that out. It is an option if you have all of that information in your address book on your phone or on your, on your computer, be sure to use that. If not, um, typing out is it's probably the best way to go about that. So we'll go ahead and go to the next page, which is the destination and consignee information. And you'll notice that this is the exact same um, for the most part as what the origin and consigner information is um, and how you utilize it. So for this example, we'll say that um, instead of a first name and last name, we have in, instead a business name. And so this is going to be Jane Doe's um, cattle company. Um, and so she's she's going to be at address 987 um, Road 2. This city, we'll, we'll say it's in some place. Um, we'll, for this example, say it's in Indiana. Go ahead and put that Indiana zip code in there or whatever state you're writing that CVI to. Um, if you know the county, go ahead and put that in there. It's not a required field, um, but if, if you do know that, put that there. Again, a phone number is required, so putting um, the phone number of that business name or of that individual in there is, is encouraged. In fact, it's required. Um, the other functionality is the same with the email address. So um, we'll say that this is doe um, cattle co at hotmail. And once you submit that CVI to us here at the state, um, not only will John Doe get the email, but now Jane Doe's cattle company will also get that email. Um, of that electronic CVI. The same functionality works um, with the same as above. So put, um, clicking that as well as your address book functionality. The next page is the transportation and carrier information page. And so here is where you're gonna choose from a, a long list here of your purpose of movement. So again, for this purpose, we'll just for simplicity's sake, say it's a greeting. Um, there's the transportation method. For this one, we'll choose truck. And then if you know or if you have any carrier information, um, again, this, the same functionalities work as um, the consigner and consignee or origin destination, where the email, if you have an email, will be um, will receive a copy when you submit it, as well as that address book functionality. Yeah, it Yes. Just wanted to point out to them that carrier information is not required. So you don't have to fill out name, address, the whole bit. But if you want to just put the email address in. And another thing with the required phone numbers, the system doesn't really recognize a valid phone number from an invalid phone number. We always recommend that you use a valid phone number. But if you don't have one, it is a required field. You can just put all zeros, all ones, all fives, just so that field is full. So you, you don't have to make 10 calls to get somebody's phone number. You can just go ahead and drop it in. Okay. Yeah, good, good point. Um, so we'll go ahead and go to the next page. And this is where you're going to add your, those custom statements that we talked about earlier. So to add that custom statement, you can either type it all out or if you have it already saved into that CVI already, um, there's the green plus button and it'll open up what I'm going to call is your library of custom statements that you can choose from. Um, so for these, we'll add the custom statement that is there at least 120 days pregnant, puts it in there in that custom statements area. Um, pretty easy there. The other thing we have here is the herd and flock uh, credited free for. And so those are just simple flicks of the, of the little, this toggle switch, if you will. Moving on, this is the, the page that probably for those of you that have that CVI already looks the most different um, and functions, functions a little different too. So 
We'll first off go through how to what I'm calling enter animal information manually. Then we'll show you how much easier it is to upload it via a spreadsheet if that's available to you. So for this one, we'll go ahead and, and add beef cattle. And so it does require that you have a breed in there um, as well as a sex. We'll choose female for this example. And then a date of birth, if it, that is known. If not, either an age, and this should be a numerical value. So we'll say this is two, and then the age in is your age units. And so we have days, weeks, months, and years. We'll choose years for this example. Now we start getting into the, into the area that gets a little bit tricky to, to kind of know what uh, to choose. And so the group type. So a single group type is just that. It's a single animal entry into your CVI. We really don't recommend using single if you're use if it's a, a CVI for any anything more than two to three animals. Um, single by default will always be one on your head count. Um, so we encourage using that express single button, which we'll talk about here in a second. The group function is for primarily feeder animals that um, the anything that doesn't need any ID. Um, so using that group function is, is what we recommend there. And then finally, that express single is anything that's requiring any official ID or anything that's more than two or three head for sure. So for this example, we'll go ahead and put that there's five, um, or we'll say that there's two for make it easier. Um, it functions the same way. We'll put a, a short animal description in there saying that these are black cows, um, and then we we move on to the the second most trickiest part, if you will, and that's the uh, the ID type. Um, for IDs, what especially for large animal veterinarians, what you'll be using is either the AIN, which is your news not or your RFID tags, EID tags, eight forty tags, um, whatever you want to call them. It's all the same thing. Um, the electronic tags, the AIN, is what you'll use. The metal clips, so your silver, your silver brides or your bangs clips, if you will, are the news nine. So those are the two that you're primarily going to be using um, when writing CVI and adding in um, IDs. For this one, we will enter an AIN. And so the next option you need to choose is, is this, are you going to apply the same ID to every animal? Or are you going to say that the IDs that you have are in a range, a sequential range, or the manual. Um, we encourage the manual. There's a couple of different reasons for this. One is if they're in a spreadsheet um, like we have here already, we can copy and paste these in to the value column here and, and make it pretty simple. Now, again, for this situation, we could have used the range function because they are sequential. Um, but for, again, this purpose, we're, we're copying and pasting it in. Um, you can also type into the value column if it's in the manual, as well as scan um, an EID into the, the value column. So we'll go ahead and save these two animals. It's going to upload them, and we see that there's two animal entries now into beef cattle. So that's what I'm calling the manual way. Um, the updated way is by using an Excel spreadsheet. So we're going to, instead of typing out all of this information into VET CVI, we're going to instead upload this spreadsheet into VET CVI. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the green Excel um, button, and it's going to ask, does your import spreadsheet have column headers or column names? And you're going to push yes. It's going to pull up here in a second. Um, the, the file, and you're going to have to go and find that file that you want to upload. So this is the one that we were looking at just a second ago. We're going to go ahead and open it, and it's going to take it just a second, and then we're going to see that all of those IDs and all of that information now is pre-filled into that CVI. So we can see that there's two years old, there's a six-month-old, there's a one-month-old, um, four years old, and then for this example, this these animals had both a back tag an AIN or RFID tag, as well as a news tag. We have female, 
Um, so it, it allows you to more rapidly enter all of this information. And you can see that there's um, 12 entries here. So we'll push done. And now, we, now we're updated into um, using the spreadsheet. The next little area I want to be sure that we touch on is if we're needing to add any tests or sessions or vaccination information. And so if there's a couple, there's, there's two ways of doing this. And one is, is by clicking through each one. But primarily, if you're going to be sending um, a group, click the Select All button and then add test over here in the top right corner. What you'll do next is you'll you'll hit the hit the drop down button and you'll choose are you adding a test or a vaccination. For this example, we'll do test and sessions. Um, it's a little more tricky. Then we'll have to press the green button to add that into our CVI. For this um, example, we're we'll be adding a, a TB test. Um, test code we'll say is TB result. Hopefully they're all negative. One thing we want to also tell you is for the test and the sessions area, you do have to have what it, it recognizes as an accession. So um, we know that with TB testing, there's not an accession number, but we can switch that off. So by clicking this plus button here is where you would add if there was a test or an accession number, I should say, um, adding that here, adding your lab address, city, state, zip. Um, and so on and so forth. But for those that do not have an accession number or wasn't a, a lab run test, go ahead and click that in field test and it will um, put the accession number saying, hey, this was a test done in the field. It's not going to be looking for that accession number. You do have to have the accession date. So put the date that the test would be done or completed. And then down here at the bottom, push save. What that does is it then says, hey, we don't need that accession number. And it's going to add that to those that test record. Push save again, and we will see that now we have twelve animals that have an updated test. Um, so you can still go in here, update anything you need to if if something happened. Um, and we need to see that all all twelve of these entries now have that updated test. We'll go ahead and push next. And we should be at our, our reviewing our CVI. So we've we've created our CVI and now we're we're going to review to make sure everything looks looks how it's supposed to. And so we'll scroll through here and we see that so far everything looks to be filled out correctly. If for some reason we we say or there was information that we forgot to put in. So Let's say we forgot to put in the phone number for the consignee information. What you can do is in the review page, instead of hit, hitting the back button however many times, just click the little pencil button and it'll take you right to that area. And then we can change whatever we need to. Um, once that's all updated, once you've made those changes, um, put the required fields in that it tells you to. The other little hint I'm going to show you is these three um, dots way up here in the top right hand corner. If you click those, it's a menu button. And so you can then scroll and quickly go back to that review page instead of, again, hitting the next button several times. And so here we are back at that review page. Um, just some quick navigation help, helpful hints there. So we could scroll in through. Again, we're seeing that here's all of these animals. Um, here's the test and information on all of those animals. Everything looks good. We're going to say this certificate's good to go. Push next and click the little certify button. Um, if you wish to preview your, your CVI, um, you can push the preview button and a draft will come up um, that looks pretty similar to what the one here. Um, and it shows all of the information that you entered what the finalized CVI will look like. Once you're once all of that looks good and you're ready to go, um, pushing the submit button will then will put it to here at this here or us here at the state, I should say, um, and you're you're good to go. Once you push submit, the any of those email addresses, so the consigner, consignee, origin, destination, and your transportation um, carrier will also receive that copy of the CVI. Jamie, do you have anything to add before we move on to anything else? 
for the next part. Just uh, just just uh, one thing. If you'll go back to that animal entry area, Garrett. Yep. And when you copied and pasted in the express entry. Mm -hmm. Well, here you can go ahead and add some more. I'll let you add some. So down at the very bottom, when you copy and paste those IDs in, folks, mm -hmm. make sure and Garrett, Garrett's so slick at it right now. There's going to be a space normally when you copy and paste after that last ID. I'll let him get grab some here. Make sure that you backspace because otherwise you're going to get an error message and you might want to show them the error message that yeah. they get that says your head count doesn't match. So, okay. And then if he tries to hit save. I was going to do it for us this time. It did it, but sometimes <laughs> it'll give you an, oh, I'm sorry, everybody. Sometimes it'll give you an error. Um, so that's just, just some food for thought. Um, if you have problems and your numbers don't match, that's, that's it. Nope. Great point. Yeah. So, um, if there is a space there at the end, we do encourage that you take that out of there just so, um, kind of helps make sure that there are no errors that, that do happen. So, yep. Great, great point. We'll go back um, and we'll, we're going to look at the, the CVI status button. Um, so this will show you anything that's pending delivery um, that's not been delivered or anything that's already been delivered. Um, so that's a, a cool little feature there. The other thing I want to show is your search CVI history. If you know your certificate number, um, you can type that in there and it will we'll pull up that record. Um, sometimes we don't know that certificate number, but we know, hey, I'm, I know I wrote it um, between this date and that date. And so we can can look and see um, what CVIs that that I've submitted um, by putting a date range in there and pushing a search. And so these are the ones that I've submitted already to the state office. We can see um, here they are. You can then um, do download a, a PDF if you need to, um, or edit any of, say you needed to add a correction to it. Um, pushing the pencil button, it'll put um, a, a denotion de out here to the end that says, hey, this, this CVI has been edited um, at the end of that certificate number. The other thing that we have here is the CVI drafts. Um, so this is a, a great option. And so you can see these are ones that I've, I've created. Um, if you have a, um, a, regular, a regular person that you're writing a CVI for, you can fill out as much of that information as, as you already know. And so if you have the consignee um, being the same, same thing or the same person every time, Go ahead and do a draft, and then you can do um, the copy button here. It will copy a, a, a draft, if you will, creating a new certificate number. And so that, that way you wouldn't have to fill out all of the information. Um, it's already done for you. So wanted to point that out there as well. And the same applies in the CVI um, area. If you look at your CVI history, you can actually clone your CVI. So if you have same consigner, same consignee, if you push on that, that paper over paper or rectangle over rectangle, that will also allow you to clone a CVI. It does save a lot of time in the end, uh, a tremendous amount of time. But, and another thing, if you want to start a CVI folks and you get to past your consigner consignee, and you're not quite ready to put that animal information in because the veterinarian has not done the inspection, you can go ahead and save that as a draft. You can always use the little floppy disk up in the upper right-hand corner, um, and that will save it as a draft. Then you can go back and grab it, and away you go again. Great, great point there. Um, so we're, we'll go ahead and move on to some of the, the TB test and the brucellosis um, vaccination forms. And so these function very similar to what the, the CVI functions um, do. Um, so again, the, the first page on the, we're gonna do a TB test chart here first. 
Um, so the first page is, is really just your veterinarian information page. And so very pretty likely that none of this will ever have to be changed. Pushing next, um, it'll move into, so it loads here, it's been a little slow today. There it goes. So we have the animal location information. Um, so this would be the same as your consigner, consignee, origin, destination. It functions the same way. So if you have a first name, a last name, uh, and no business name, putting in A or vice versa, adding that address, city, state, zip, phone number, um, the email functionality works the same way. So when you submit this TB test chart, um, whatever email address is in there will also receive a copy of this. Um, this TB test chart. The owner details, again, is the same with that same as above function, where typically it's the same where the animal location and the owner details are the, are the same. And then also the address bug book functionality works the exact same way. Um, so really, this, this page on the TB test chart is no different than what the CBI is. The next page on the TB test chart is the test related information. So this is where it begins to get a little bit different just because we're doing a TB test chart. Um, so putting your herd number in there, the reason for your test, um, whatever that may be, um, we'll say for this one, it's, it's uh, we'll say for other. Um, there's a species that you do have to select, whether it be deer, bison, elk, or, or cattle, and it doesn't differentiate between dairy or beef. Um, they're saying cattle is cattle. Method for your test, um, primarily for you guys here on the call, will be that caudal fold. And then is this uh, a, herd, a herd test of all eligible animals? Yes or no. Um, eligible animals in the herd, that tuberculin serial number, and then your dates and times. There's also a certification for payment, which most of the time will be at that owner's expense. Moving on to the next page is where we're going to add our animals. So on this page, it, it does look a little bit different, and you'll have to push the, the add button. Again, primarily, um, most people are going to be TB testing larger groups of animals, so we encourage you to use that express single um, rather than that single entry. Um, if you are only TB testing one animal, by all means, use the single. Um, if not, use that express single is what we encourage. Again, the head count, the breed, sex, um, as well as the age, and this is the age being a numerical value, HN being the units, animal description, the entry reason, um, whether it be a retag, uh, natural edition, or a purchased edition, and then your, your results being hopefully negative, and then your, again, the, the ID type, the AIN being your RFID, EID, electronic tag, whatever you want to call it, they're all the same, and your other option for primarily will be the, the news nine tag. Um, the same, apply to same as all, the range and the manual information are all the same as what the CBI options were. So you would go ahead and push save. Um, for this example, since we didn't put it in there, it's gonna give me an error. So we'll just put back any animals that, are, that we had entered would show up here. And then all we have to do is review our TV test chart. Um, one of the reasons I didn't put all of that in there, one, to save time, but also two, anything that has that red asterisk and is highlighted red shows you that, hey, you didn't fill out this information. And so, again, to be able to quickly navigate to that area, click the pencil button, it'll take you to that area where you can fill out what you need to. Once you filled it out, again, the three buttons at the top right hand corner, you can then scroll to the next area that you, that, um, you need to navigate to. Um, once everything's filled out, you'll push next and then the submission process is the exact same. Hey Garrett, we have a great yes. question that somebody uh, just asked. Uh, they work at a zoo and since the TB test form requires a species, 
She was wondering if she could still use it for the exotic hoof stock, such as as antelope and stuff. And I said, yes, but also uh, they're going to be adding, I know for sure goats were antelopes, another thing that they were going to be adding in the near future. I know they're adding some species because we've had had some other folks um, ask about that as well. Yeah, no, that's a, a great question. I think I'm reading what you put in there um, and that looks, looks correct that um, they are going to be adding some species. I know um, cap rhino or goat was one that was was definitely requested from from multiple states to be added i'm not for sure on exotic hoof stock such as an antelope not for sure if that is one um but we can definitely definitely see if that's an option to be added in there um for sure so yeah great great question and and this is another reason we have these these webinars is to find out some of this information that um we've either overlooked or that we we aren't quite sure about. So yeah, thanks thanks for that question for sure. And another thing that you can do if you have a species that that's not on there right now, you can actually use your animal description and add the animal description in there. Then when we get that record, it's not like those records go to different states. Those are more for in-house use. And if you wanna just give us a call and explain it, then once it's uploaded in our system, we can actually look at other options there as well. So great question. Yep, absolutely. Uh, the next little area we're going to touch on is the brucellosis vaccination. Um, so again, a lot of what is in vet CBI is repetitive, um, meaning that this it looks and it feels the exact same whether you're on the CVI, the TB, or the, the brucellosis vaccination. So again, this this first page is nothing new. You've this is the information you would have provided to to the state to get access to that CVI, and again, probably not a whole lot of reason to need to change it. Um, pushing next, you'll see that this functions the exact same way. We still have that same as above. Um, we still have the the address book functionality as well as the email. That when you submit this brucellosis vaccination chart, whatever emails are in here or down here, will also be receiving a, an email with that brucellosis vaccination chart. So again, very, very similar functionalities to what we've, we've seen previously. Uh, the next area here is where it starts to get specific about your brucellosis vaccination information. Um, so we do have the RB51 as the strain, the dosage, whether it be full or reduced, the serial number that you're using, as well as the vaccination date, expir expiration date, excuse me. And then the, the nice thing about here is it's gonna pre-fill in there that three for 2023, your vaccination tattoo. Um, the certification for payment um, primarily is gonna be yep, at that owner's expense. Um, any herd numbers, um, the species also in here being beef, dairy, or bison and any remarks that you wish to put there. If this is a, a certification for reestablishment, yes and no, and then whether it's a calf hood or adult vaccination, primarily um, probably that calf hood vaccination. Yeah, just a, a rule of thumb for office staff or vet techs that help the veterinarians get information in, your dosage is always going to be reduced and it's you're always going to choose calf hood vaccination unless that veterinarian tells you otherwise. So those are just those are just two standard things that that apply all the time really for calf hood vaccinations. So the next area is where we're going to be adding our animals and again you'll see that it's similar to what it was for our TB test charts uh, where we're going to have to push that add button um, with brucellosis vaccination um, primarily again you're more than likely going to be doing more than one. So doing that express single entry, um, entering your head count. And I'm going to go ahead and show this um, just for some functionality purposes. So we'll say that there's a head count of 10. We're going to be doing Angus. Um, they're going to be the female age. They're going to be six, um, six months. Birth, or the animal description will say that they're black, um, whatever you want to put in there. The entry reason, whatever it is, we'll just say it's a natural addition. If there's a purebred or grade, we'll go ahead and put that in there um, if, if you desire. And then again, for the, the 
ID purposes, it's going to either be that AIN or that NEWS9. Um, for this example, we'll use that NEWS9, and we're going to say, and typically when we're bursulosis vaccinating, um, you're staying in order of, of tags as you're vaccinating each animal. So what we'll do is um, we'll put the starting tag number in there as, um, as such. And then we'll, we'll hit save. Um, what this will do, because we push the range, is it will look at your head count. Remember, we put 10, and it's going to add those in there one by one um, all the way until there's 10 of them there. Something just to, to note um, that that is an option for your bursulosis vaccination. And if for some reason you get out of successive order, you can just delete whatever tag. I mean, you can go ahead and use your range function and maybe you have four tags that didn't go in right or you weren't able to use. Go ahead and enter that range and then just go in and, and delete those four. Uh, it's just so much easier than trying to enter everything in a spreadsheet, especially if, you, if you're in succession. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the next page we have here is, again, that review page, um, seeing, again, that we didn't enter any of the first name, last name, or business name. It's going to show up red, um, the same functionality with the pencil to jump from that spot um, to the next spot, as well as the three buttons to, to jump around. Once you've completed everything and everything looks good, um, the submission process is the same. Once you submit it, it then um, not only comes to us here at the state office, but also to any of those email addresses that are that you've listed in that CBI. Um, back on our dashboard page, there's also um, TB and OCV drafts. So if you're um, routinely TB testing for a, a particular facility, um, you utilize that draft option, um, the status as well, as well as the search history. Um, and they all function the exact same as what we saw in the, the CBI area. I did see a question up here earlier about, um, is this for interstate and international for small animal pets? So um, we'll go ahead and again, the, the small animal and large animal CVIs um, are function the exact same way. There's um, really only one area that is different, and that's the species area. So instead of showing that it's pot a potential for a, a horse or a cow or a, a hog, um, it's going to show dogs and cats. And so we'll just kind of skip through this until we get to that point. Um, so, and I'm not even using my own hint here, um, but I think the question here was um, more on the destination and consignee. So yes, you can you can leave that as the state of Kansas if it's in uh, a, a CVI from Kansas to Kansas. Um, but also you could you can change the country. Um, so if you're you're sending a say a dog to Switzerland, go ahead and change switch, switch change your country to Switzerland. Um, the the thing that is not currently a functionality is. Obviously, Kansas is not in Switzerland, um, but there are no options other than U.S. states um, if you are using it for an international uh, certificate. So go ahead and leave that as the state of Kansas, um, but do change the country to Switzerland or whatever country you may be writing for. And another thing, when you go to enter your address for an international export, go ahead in that address and put that that street and then go ahead and put your your city and your state up there and then of course your country is going to be correct and you can go ahead and put that international zip code in the in the zip box but just go ahead and add the rest of the information on the address line yep um so the um Again, the purpose of movement still shows the exact same as it was on the large animal side, as well as the transportation method. Um, if it's that interstate movement, you can check the yes or no box. Any of that carrier information, um, you, can, you can choose to put in there. 
Again, the email functionality and the address book functionality work the exact same as um, what we've talked about previously on the large animal, the TB test charts, and the OCV, chest, uh, OCV um, vaccination. Here's the, the area that is the most different, which is it just shows your dogs, cats, and then any other. Um, but again, you can add um, your breed, the sex, um, single group, express single is all the same. For, for you folks that are writing for small animal CVIs, um, you will, will not be using an AIN or a new nine tag, um, but primarily the, the name or the, the MFR manufacturing RFID. Um, what that is, is essentially your microchip. So by putting that in there, you can, you can enter your microchip or scan into, um, scan into there right now. So um, that's just something in there. Um, the other thing in this, um, even though we're in a, in a dog application, we'll, I'll still show this, but uh, if you're writing a, a CVI for an equine, you can um, put the equine photographs if you have those. Um, if you already have the pictures, you can upload those. Or if you are out inspecting the, the equine or the horse, um, currently, you can take pictures um, and see what those are um, as you're doing it. Um, just wanted to put that out there um, as another thing, even though we were in the, the small animal dog area. Um, moving on, pushing. Um, and this is something I we probably should have discussed earlier in the back on the large animal. Um, so we'll say that your um, your dog doesn't have a microchip. The state doesn't require a microchip. What that CVI does require is no matter what group type, um, whether it be single group, express single, um, no matter what species, whether it be dog, cat, horse, feeder cattle, um, breeding age cattle, hogs, swine, poultry, um, everything has to have something in the value column. So if there is no actual ID, so talking here primarily feeder animals, um, anything that, again, doesn't require that, that ID, um, there does have to be something there. So again, pushing in A can, um, can do that. Garrett, would yes. you go back there for just a moment, please? Um, mm. I did have a question on the microchip. If, if you want to use a microchip for the ID, that's perfectly fine. And you can go ahead and use your, your ID can actually be a management ID. It can be other, whatever, whatever you want to use. And I also want to tell all of the small animal people, when you go to put information in that value area, you can put as much information in there descriptive wise. In fact, I actually received a vet CVI uh, file for a small animal today, and they had all their vaccination information in there as well. Now, there is a special area for vaccinations and test sessions, just like there are with the large animals, but you can put microchip, you can put name, you can put a advanced description. So that value area isn't just limited to what you can write on that that first line, and you can even copy and paste information into there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so right now, there's not, I'm sorry, there's not currently a way to upload that rabies certificate. So uh, if you do have a rabies certificate, uh, you're going to have to send that with the owner, probably. And that's that's the best thing anyway. Always send them a paper copy of that. And anytime you list rabies information on a CBI, it's very important that you list the manufacturer, the serial number, the date given, because a lot of states require that information, including us here in Kansas. That is the one big requirement for small animals that, that I really try to watch when I review import CVIs. Yeah, so um, we'll go ahead and add a test um, to, this, to this record, even though we've kind of jumped all over the place here recently. Um, 
but we'll go ahead and add a vaccination, um, clicking the plus button. And it's just, again, that, that free typing, whatever uh, you need to in there, and then the date that that vaccination was given. So this one's a little bit more straightforward than your actual test or a session area, um, just in the functionality of how it works. And it looks like there's a couple questions here. Um, one of them being, I thought IMP was for implanted microchips. Does IMP stand for something else? So that's a great question. I'm going to move towards that um, area. And it doesn't look like there is. Oh, there is. Um, so yeah, you can definitely choose that for your, your implanted microchips. That would also be very acceptable. Um, primarily what we're looking at here in Kansas for our ID types is more focused on our, our large animals um, being, being that AIN, RFID tag, or that News 9 or News 8 tag. Um, but yes, you can use that management ID, the manufacturer RFID, other, the IMP, um, whatever, whatever um, you would like to use for that. Now, I see another question in here is, can you demonstrate how to use the contact functionality within the CVI? So I think you are talking about um, back here, the, the address book functionality. Is that what we're, you're asking about? Okay, so I, it's a great question. So unfortunately, I don't have contacts on my computer, as you can see here. Um, I guess there I do. So um, I didn't realize I did. But so yeah, um, just by clicking the, the people or whatever you have, um, again, since I'm the only one in my contacts for this example, um, searching however, how you, however you would, because I'm in there clicking it and it pre-fills that out already. So yeah, I guess I kind of forgot that I had done that at, at some point. So yeah, great, great question there. Any other questions? on anything um, we've talked about or anything we haven't talked about here. Hey, my friend Nicole from Missouri, you had a really good point on our webinar. Do you remember what it was that you pointed out that we had not talked about? And I think it's something today as well. Do you remember what that was last time? Um, are you talking about when they were updating license information? If yes. you're working for a PC, you need to make sure that your pop-up blocker is turned off or you won't get the warning dialog box and you won't be able to continue. It, it just seems like it's not working. Okay. And you know what? I wonder maybe if that was part of what what uh, my vet's experienced this morning here. So um, thank you for pointing that back out. I knew you had a really good point. I just, well, you have a lot of good points, Nicole, but I just couldn't remember exactly what it was. Hey, Jamie, this is Molly from Kentucky. I had a vet this morning have the same issue and I did it on my vet account and was having the same issue. So like, do you just turn off pop-up blockers like on your web browser or where do you turn that off at? I made them go into their actual physical web browser. So they were using Chrome. So I made them go into their Chrome settings and turn off the blocker. I told them that after they've done this update that they could go ahead and turn it back on just for their own security. But anytime they were going to update that, they were gonna need it off just so that dialog box will pop up. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Nicole. Speaking of new versions, for those who have been using Vet CBI or, or and are just on here for the webinar, make sure when your initial screen pops up that that version at the bottom says one point three point nine. Garrett's going to log off here and we'll yeah, so I'll over. I'll log off and show. Mine's in the staging environment, so it'll say staging, and I'm actually on a different version because I'm in the staging, but it's it'll be in the same place here, so. Um, just know that, yeah, mine's going to show a little bit different, but it's, yeah, down here, it'll be the correct and most updated version of VET CVI in production is 1.3.9. So 
again, I'm in the staging environment, um, but anything that's in production is that 1.3.9. So if you're not 1.3.9, Garrett, could you go ahead and log back in, please? I can. I'm going to have Garrett log back in. So if it's not updated, there's something that we want you to do before you before you update your vet CVI or have to uh, I personally on my lap on my work laptop I had to uninstall and reinstall. But if you go to to yeah, it's over here. My, yeah. Yep, and go to maintenance. This is very important if you if you haven't updated. Hit your sync CVI. And then once you've synchronized, I always refresh as well. I tell them to refresh. Then you can go ahead and log out. And then you, you may need to uninstall and reinstall. By synchronizing and refreshing, that should save the information that's in your current, current account. So you shouldn't lose your drafts and your CVIs and everything that's in there. So um, just... Um, just a rule of thumb. Another thing that I, I, I want to stress for those of you that have not used Vet CVI yet, when you create an account, it's extremely important under your USDA licensure. You, you have two options, of course, level one and level two. If you are a level two USDA accredited veterinarian, make sure you list that because if you list level one, and it gets past us, you will only be allowed to write small animal CBIs. So make sure that you get your accreditation right. And another question that we get asked a lot is, can I sign up all my veterinarians at the clinic under one account? And the answer is no, unfortunately, every veterinarian has their own account. So vet CBI is very, very veterinarian specific. If you have, um, more than two or three vets in the clinic, I would advise using the, the same user ID, um, maybe just to match their name or say Dr. Garrett or Jamie W. And then use the same password for all of them. That way it's easy to remember. So just, just a couple tips there. And I'm sorry, Garrett, one, oh, you're one, good. More, one more thing. If you need that spreadsheet template, if you've been a vet CBI user and you don't have that yet, just reach out to us and I'll email that to you. If you sign up for a vet CBI, that's something that I automatically email when I send you some information. So that's all I have. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Absolutely. Um, so one last thing um, I want to show before we get to the, the top of the hour is Jamie and I have, have done a lot of work to um, help create what we've called segmented videos. And so we, we realized that sometimes it's hard for, for you guys to jump on an hour webinar in the middle of the day um, when you're trying to, trying to see clients. And so we appreciate and, and definitely thank you guys that are on the call. Um, and we will be posting this webinar to our website. Um, but we also realized that it's sometimes hard to be able to filter through and find um, where we talked about a specific issue and so, um, or an area I should say on vet CVI. So on our KDA website under divisions and programs, and then, um, well, I kind of messed up there, but under the division of animal health, there's an electronic CVI button as well as a vet CVI webinar. Currently the vet CVI webinar button goes to nowhere. Um, but here, hopefully tomorrow, we will be uploading um, the this webinar into the into the website, and so you can click on there. And it'll pull up a YouTube video um, for you to to reference back. The other thing we realize is that sometimes it's hard to to know. Hey, I only have a question on this little area, and I need to know it now. Um, so we've created um, Vet CVI resources here on this page. Um, so again, it's we'll we'll go from the beginning. So the the homepage, divisions and programs, division of animal health, electronic CVI, and then if you have questions and you still aren't quite sure on how to um, utilize the Excel upload function, click on there, and it will take you to a YouTube video that we created here in the office 
um, just a two and a half minute quick video on here's how you utilize that functionality. Um, so again, those are resources for you guys to be able to use. Um, definitely use those if, if you need to, or give us a call here in the office. We're more than happy to help um, with anything um, or any issues that you have. Um, so are there any other questions? I know we're now at the past the top of the hour, but any other last minute questions before we before we wrap up? While we're waiting for any last minute questions, I just personally like to thank every one of you for everything that you're doing and your interest in vet CVI. We we've, we've had an overwhelming response. It's been really good. So we're happy about that. And um Word of mouth is the best marketing tool and the best way to teach people. So any any way that you can help each other or your respective states, I know we have some out-of-state folks on here with us as well, uh, just keep plugging along because it's um, it, it's really starting to take a hold and we're, we're so thankful and, and so grateful for that. It's a, it's a great tool. It really is. All right. Well, I'm not seeing anything in the chat here, and I haven't heard anybody pipe up yet if they have a question. So we'll go ahead and in the in the webinar. And so thank you guys for all jumping on. And again, if you guys have any questions, uh, be sure and reach out to us here at the office and we will talk to you later.